Welcome to Electron Online and here we're going to do an example of how to graph an ellipse when both the x squared term and the y squared term have coefficients in front of them that are not equal to 1. How do we handle that? Well, kind of the same way as before. So first what we're going to do is we're going to put all the x terms together, all the y terms together, and all the constants on the right side of the equation. So let's do that. So we have 4x squared minus 16x, um, then we leave some space plus 9y squared plus 18y and then leave some space and equals positive 11 when we bring the negative 11 over to the right side of the equation. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and factor out the coefficient in front of the x squared term, the coefficient in front of the y squared term. So when we do that, we end up with 4 times x squared minus 4x, like that, plus 9 times y squared plus 2y, and again, I'll leave some space here, equals 11. All right, so, so far, we haven't changed anything yet, just written it in a slightly different form and factored out the 4 over here and the 9 over there. Now, we need to complete the square over there and over there. So, let me grab my red pen. And so, what we do here is we take the coefficient here, take half this coefficient, square it. So, half of minus 4 is minus 2 squared. They get positive 4, so I'm going to add plus 4 over here. So, I need to add the same to the right side of the equation. But remember that this is inside the parentheses and it's multiplied times this 4, so 4 times 4 is 16. I added 16 on the left side, which means I need to add 16 on the right side. Okay, now over here, I take half this coefficient, which is 1 squared, I get plus 1. But notice that this is inside the parentheses, it's multiplied times 9, so in effect I added 9 on the left side, that means I need to add 9 on the right side. Okay, now I have this written as a, as a perfect square, which means I can write this as a binomial squared. So this can now be simplified as 4 times x minus 2 quantity squared, because if I square this, I get the same as I have over there, plus 9 times y plus 1 quantity squared, and that equals, when I add everything together, that is 20, that's 36. Okay, now what's next? Well, I need to get rid of these two coefficients. And if I divide this by 4, I still end up with a coefficient other than 1 over here. If I divide by 9, I get something other than 1 over there. So what I could do is I can divide both sides of the equation by the product of these two numbers. 4 times 9 is 36. I can divide both sides by 36, and that's what I'm going to do. So divide the left side by 36 and divide the right side by 36. So notice the trick here is to multiply these two coefficients together and divide both sides by that number. So when we do that, we get the following. 4 divided by 36 is 1, 9. So I can write this as x minus 2 quantity squared divided by 9 plus and 9 divided by 36 is 1 fourth, so I can write this as y plus 1 quantity squared divided by 4, and that equals 1. Okay, I'm getting closer and closer to the standard form. Next thing I want to do is write this as a number squared, and write this as a number squared. So this becomes x minus 2 quantity squared divided by 3 squared plus y plus 1 quantity squared divided by 2 squared equals 1. And now I have this equation in the standard form. Notice that the number underneath the x term is bigger than the number underneath the y term, which means that the ellipse is going to be sideways, and the center of the ellipse is going to be found at x equals 2 and y equals negative 1, because the h and the k is h is, is 2 and k is negative 1. So, graphing the ellipse, the center of the ellipse can be found by taking h and k, this is h, this is k, so h is 2 and k is negative 1. So 1, 2, negative 1, this is the center of the ellipse. Notice that the major axis will be in this direction, the minor axis will be in this direction. Now, what is the length of the major axis? The length of the major axis is twice this number. So it's plus or minus 3 away from the center, so it's 2 plus 3, which is 5. 3, 4, 5, so that's the vertex on this direction, and 2 minus 3 is 1, 0, negative 1, it's on this direction. So this here is the major axis of the ellipse. The minor axis will be in this direction, the size of the minor axis, minor axis will be twice this number, or 4, 
up two and down two. So I go up one, two, down. So that will be two right there. One, two, and down two. So this will be the minor axis. And now when we connect these points like this, we have ourselves an ellipse like that. Now, what about the foci of the ellipse? Well, remember that the foci are the center plus C and the center minus C. And C is equal to the square root of a squared minus b squared. In this case, that's the square root of a squared is 3 squared, b squared is, is uh, 2 squared. 2 squared is so equal to the square root of 9 minus 4, which is equal to the square root of 5, which is about equal to 2.25 or something like that. What's the square root of 5? Let's find out. 5, take the square root, 2.24, close enough. 2.24, okay. And so that means that C will be about here, and minus C will be about here. Well, actually a little bit further, isn't it? Right there and right there. So that will be the foci. That will be minor axis, major axis. This point right here is at 2, 1. This point right here is at 2, uh, minus 3. This point right here will be at, uh, let's see, that's 2 plus 3 is 5 and minus 1. This one right here would be at minus 1, minus 1. There we go. And that gives you a really good picture of what that ellipse looks like. Make sure I got that right. So I have 2. Okay, this was at 2 and 1. The center, oop, 2 and negative 1. There we go. 5, negative 1. Yep, that looks about right. And that's how we do that.